<laughs> What's going on, y'all? How you guys doing? Camera is uh, a little too low. Always hard to tell. It's always hard to tell. Let's see if we can show some of the lights, though. Who cares? Who cares? Got some lovely subs from Amos Dean, Evan, and also Mr. Funkadizzle. And I might have missed one early on in the stream. How you guys doing? Oh. Okay. What are those holders that I'm using? These are from a company called um, a cases, they used to, they didn't used to, they make a case that is magnetic. Uh, this is their logo. Uh, they have several of these like magnet type cases. Flossmith, thank you for the sub. Yo, um, it's my father. <laughs> um, yeah, they all, they're all kind of like the same kind of shtick, just different form factors. So this one, you know, I can pull out the shelves and stuff. Um, and they, they also make that hobby holder, and they uh, they have like a bunch of different shapes and stuff, and they attach to this handle, so like you can pop it off and and put one on. And I was sent the prototype, and so mine is three D printed, but it also has like a bunch of different shapes. I think they were trying to figure out the right one. Also a cork one as well, so you, so you can magnetize and use the same holder if you want to pin a model instead of uh, using a, using it on the base with magnets on it. Um, shatter point case, hell yeah, dude. Um, how's it going, guys? Giant bin of Vallejo indeed. That's what we're using today to paint this, uh, this juve that I want to finish up. Um, but let me show you what I've been working on. Um, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys like to see what I'm working on that will eventually go into a video, or if you'd rather save the surprise for later. Uh, Cause I could just, I could just paint Shatterpoint stuff right now, which uh, the stormtroopers aren't going to go into a video. So that would like save the surprise of Cawdor stuff later on, but I don't really know. Um, Milks. Mike's, <laughs> Milk's, <laughs> Milk's Minis. Uh, Mike's Minis, thanks for the sub. I just cut a cork in half and glued it to a 25 mil base so I can, yeah, that works too. Does not need to be complicated. I mean, all of your Cotter guys get exactly the same. That's just patently false. You're a liar, Evan. How does it feel to be a liar? Huh? What is it like? I never lie ever, so I, I wouldn't know. Uh, have you decided on what color to paint your red Vader saber? No, I haven't. Oh, no, we did. We, we decided uh, Spaz Almighty actually suggested that I do a Sith, like, war sword. And so we're going to convert it. By we, I mean me. I'm going to convert it um, to have a Sith war blade. So it'll be silver, like a sword. Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look what I've been working on. Swarthed? Yes. Um, where do I need to go with this thing? There we go. After getting an RSI from hobbying, I'm prioritizing, I'm starting to prioritize ergonomics on the small dealies. Yeah, it happens. It only happened to me when I painted for an ultra long time. I don't know how you can settle on colors. I've been redoing my Mortarian because I can't decide. Um, I don't really know how I settle on colors exactly. You know, I kind of just, I'm able to get any paint job to a pretty good place, um, but it does require some finagling. Um, but I, I don't know what decision matrix I go through to be like, yep, this is right. And then I'll continue with that. I'm not sure actually. Um, you should give Verters, have Verters, you should give Vader's cape a fur, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, that's so sick. That's such a sick idea. Um, here is, uh, so I, I talked to you guys that I, I wanted to, 
like change up the way um, my main word keeper, my leader looked, Jedediah. And so I love this model a lot and I wanted to use him. And as he is used in a typical Cawdor list as a hanger on, he's quite expensive and he's not super useful. So I figured, uh, well, he's useful, but it's just too expensive. Um, he doesn't hang around forever. He like, he like stays until he finishes his bounty hunting job, and then he leaves. And so I took him and I got rid of his great sword and I used two different night haunt bits. The, the sword from the, uh, oh, it's like the box that comes with two cavalry people in it. I can't remember what it's called, but they have these really big fuck off great swords. And so I did some pinning here to get that to work. And then this blade sharpening bit is from an Underworlds kit, but also, interestingly enough, also a Night Haunt. Um, and this just, this this is like basically a way cooler word keeper than the one that I was using. Um, I'm really happy with this like super subtle conversion. There's a lot of like small finagling that went into getting this to work, work okay. Um, oh, that his hand is rotting away. Yeah, I think I'll be able to paint it to look like a glove because obviously he's wearing gloves. Um, that or I can um, take some green stuff and kind of like fill in like the bone detail on his uh, forearm and, and that'll probably be good. Um, he has, I mean, this ghost has like a, has really long fingers. That's, that's one concern, but I think if I file it down a little bit so it's less bony and then fill in that side of his hand, it'll probably look more like a glove. I like this, I like this conversion a lot. Um, so uh, I'm really happy with it. Um, oh man, this talk of Sith swords makes me, makes me with that chatter point would expand to the old, yeah. I mean, you never know, right? They have three eras right now. Um, they might expand it, who knows? Wild West Wood Elves live stream when? That probably isn't gonna happen. Make Vader's pants leopard print? <laughs> okay, no. Dearth Verder. What up, Ready Yeti? Um, Thank you, Amos Dean. Yeah, I, I agree with Straken. Simple but nice. Uh, that's that's how I feel about it. You can, oh, actually, you know what? That's actually kind of a cool idea, Rufus Kit, to make it feel like it, uh, he has like he has like a wounded hand or something like that. That's kind of a cool idea. The Acolyte Show takes place in the higher public. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, you're right. They probably might make some characters from that if there's a show, because yeah, we've we've seen a lot of characters in the Star Wars show be made into miniatures. So you're not you're not wrong on that, Rufus. Um, now my other dudes, I mentioned this in the past. Um, they had uh, I forget what they're called auto auto poles, I believe. They're basically a gun attached to a stick, and I needed a flamethrower attached to a stick, and so I did a couple conversions so they all look, look uh, like flamethrowers. Um, and I kind of try to make it look suitably trashy. Um, which is why I kind of attach that mesh to it. So I need to repaint uh, these plastic parts um, to, so that I can be finished with the model again. I did that one. I did this one. It's kind of easy when the conversion is supposed to look like trash. Also, GW makes converting guns super easy because of just like everything's a fucking 3D rectangle, and so you just glue it together, and it's just like, okay, there's a lot of surface area. It sticks nicely, you don't need a pin. It's pretty easy. This is my favorite conversion that I did. Um, these bits right here, uh, the one you see in both of these guys, come from Admech. Uh, Dan Mollison from The Source gave me these bits. And they also have these lovely long gas canisters on them. Um, and, uh, I wish, he gave me two bits and I cut one of these long ones off and I lost it. Uh, it like went to my carpet somewhere. Um, but this is aluminum wire. It's really easy to bend and make it like look like a cable. And this little clasp right here, is just like a very small piece of a hollow styrene cylinder that I just cut and then I sliced it open. So you can actually see that on this side it's open, which I don't know, you'll never really see something like that. Um, but that makes a nice little clasp, you know? A little extra detail. Um, are those flamethrower staffs? Basically, that's what, exactly what they are. They're flamethrower staffs. Um, they're called blunderbusses, I believe, which doesn't make any sense. The blunderbuss, I, th I think, is mostly like a like a black powder rifle, right? I have no idea. Uh, what up, Hellcat? Two months away of uh, Apex shipping. The board game Apex? 
Did you see the Grief, uh, Karga, and IG-11 cards? Yeah, I did. Both are crazy good. I can't believe you find them on... Yeah, yeah, I, I saw them both. Um, I like that Bounty Hunters are getting more stuff now. Uh, it's nice that you can like have like a almost a almost a full uh, what is it called strike team firing squad I don't know a, a full team of bounty hunters um, that's pretty cool they don't seem super overpowered I feel like when I first read Moff Gideon's card he was kind of a little broken oh the blunderbuss is the one so what logic boy do you know what the name of the flamethrower weapon is. I think it's like a combi weapon, which makes it a little bit confusing to know what his name is. A deadly trombone. How'd your pants or not? I mean, I'm still wearing the pants. Uh, they're they're hard, you know. They uh, these these are painting pants, so I don't I don't really mind. Um, that being said, they became painting pants because I got paint on them, but they were originally nice, hard pants. Yeah, the guns being squares helps a lot. I cut a grenade launcher off my Krieg sprue to attach it to a flame, uh, flamer hand for my Escher. Can't really tell. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I actually was looking at some... Uh, what are they called? Okay, we did it. Uh, I was looking at some jeans to their cult models yesterday. I actually have some sprues of them. And there's a guy with a grenade launcher, which is perfect. Because I need a grenade launcher for my, my dudes at some point. And that would be super easy to just kind of slap that on there. Um, anyways, in other news... I finished another ganger. And the old word keeper that I had got converted into a sniper. You guys may recognize this dude. But I gave him uh, a new head and a new and two new weapons and, and had to uh, repaint his skin uh, just because the paint I used on his head um, I didn't have on hand, and so I kind of picked what looked best. But um, that's this is good old Jedediah, reborn as Ervil the sniper. But here are all the parts that came off really easily, um, so it wasn't it wasn't a pain at all. Um, I feel like I used that old GW glue to assemble this guy, that that thick stuff, and I feel like that thick stuff doesn't really do the same job as like to me a thin cement does. And so they kind of just pop off like super glue. <laughs> Hard pants. <laughs> I just, just wanting to follow up with you on your progress to buying loader license. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, I'm going to buy any game license. It's going to be Guild Ball. All pants eventually become painting pants. It's this natural cycle. Yeah, I agree. Gideon is 100% broken. The fear that Dark Troopers will be strong as well and we'll have a repeat of the Legion balance issues with them. Um, I don't know if Gideon is broken. He's definitely good. Uh, it's always hard to say if something is broken until you've actually played with it, you know? I haven't played with it, so I'm not sure. But it does seem good. Um, definitely, definitely going to replace uh, the Grand Inquisitor in my list. He's definitely better than the Grand, Grand Inquisitor. You guys wear paints when you pant? You guys wear... Oh, my God. You guys wear... Pants when you paint. Most times. Most times. Um, dude, GSC are so perfect to use for Necromunda. Yeah, I mean, they, they are a warband you can play in Necromunda, right? Do you see their calls? Whether they're using them on their own or for compassion. Yeah. Chubbs, thanks for the sub. I'm in need for... I'm in need for fist hands that fit DKOK. -okay. Since I'm using them for fantasy conversions, I need to hold shields. Gotcha, okay. They want to paint a jeans to their cult in all denim? Hell yeah, dude. Um, everything is broken until I play with it, and it's perfectly balanced. <laughs> uh, and then here is my other ganger that I finished over the weekend. Uh, this is one of those heads from... What's that kit called? It's like it's like Cawdor's vehicle. It's it's one of their vehicles. It's like a walker thing. Ridge walker? Ridge walker? No, no, no. Ridge, is that what it is? It's terrible. It's like it makes no sense why you would spend the credits on it because like basically it's the exact same as a guy on foot. But um, what am I trying to say right now? But like one one inch faster. He like moves one inch faster and maybe has like one higher cool, which is a stat that doesn't get used a whole lot. And it costs like 
quite a few credits more. But the head looks good on a dude on foot. And I like that checker pattern quite a bit. Jeans, Steeler, Cult, that is hilarious. That's what they should be called. What up, Vanya, Vanya, Vanya Atesh? Uh, in my book, or not in the book, but in the, in the downloadable PDF for uh, that, like, that John Schaefer gave us, the only difference between like the Cotter Walker and a normal dude is, is one inch in movement and then one other remedial stat. Uh, unless I just misread it like multiple times, but I could, could be sure that I looked at it multiple times. Um, but pretty happy with where these guys are going. I have, uh, I got to finish up those three conversions that I did with the guns, which won't take very long. I'm just painting like half of a weapon, essentially. Um, and uh, this one guy that I hope to finish in today's stream. Um, my new leader, and then these two guys that I assembled as well. Quite a bit of Cawdor progress, but that's because I'm working on it for a video. Hard pants. <laughs> They're nine inches? Cool. Well, then I don't know what I was reading. <laughs> I have the heads over here. Easier to paint them because the coif is just so, it's so deep. It's hard to get like down in there and paint that part like black and stuff or whatever color you want to paint. It's very obscured. All right, let's do some painting. Okay, so. I can't remember what I used to paint these guys. That's okay. So we can kind of figure it out. I got some paint on the palette right now. This is some kind of tan color. Um, and But it's quite dark. And so I have tan on my palette. I have an ochre and I have a chocolatey brown. These three tones. And I'm hoping that I can... Uh, mix these together to get what I need. Uh, Scott, did you see the dark old stuff? Yeah, dude, I did. Oh, man. There's so much cool barbarian stuff now in Age of Sigmar. Like, they had a couple of cool, like, either Warcry or Underworld Warbands. There's, like, two event-exclusive miniatures. Um... You could like, I have the same feelings about Night Haunt that I do about um, Barbarians and Age of Sigmar, which is that you could totally, I mean, I just want to make like a, a, a cool group of miniatures and just paint them. I don't care what game it's for, but I just want to paint a bunch of cool Night Haunt stuff. All right, let's see. Let's see how close we are with this paint. We'll start in the back of the mini. This paintbrush is giving me grief right now. Hmm. That looks pretty damn close. Now the further down we get here, like right here, we're gonna start to see the paint a little bit more. Yeah, on that high, in that high raised area, that looks pretty much exactly like the color that we need. Um, the Wilder Fiend monster scratches some kind of feral. I don't know what that is. What is Wilder Fiend? I'm glad I'm not too deep in cities to swap over to Dark Oath Homies. Nice. Yeah, they're freaking cool. I think John is also very hyped on the uh, Darko Savages. He's probably going to pick up the models and then maybe paint them. No guarantees. All right, I'm going to mix up some more here. Okay. Okay. 
that looks pretty much like a almost like a perfect match. So chat, how many of you have been consumed by Hell Divers too? <laughs> My entire Steam friends list is all Hell Divers too. Game is so good. Fucking me, dude. <laughs> I'm too antisocial for co op games. That's kind of the way I feel about games like uh, Left 4 Dead and Vermintide and Dark Tide. I'm not antisocial, but like, this is not the kind of game I want to play. You know, I don't want to play a co op four player game. Uh, then again, I, I am down to play Dota which on paper is exactly the same as that kind of game, but just feels different for some reason to me. I don't know why it feels different. And you know, obviously it's a different game, but. <laughs> Did Uncle Adam talk about this in his last video? Um, I don't know. I think, uh, I think Uncle Adam's last video was, uh, a video that was in favor of war games with simple rule sets. I think that was Uncle Adam's most recent vid. Oh, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Playing video games is cringe. <laughs> totally true. Totally true, dude. I'm never on the initial wave of new popular games. I always wait until they're like two bucks in Steam and then I'll, then I'll, then I'll still never play them. Yeah. Hey, Drake Knight. Thanks for the sub. Just bought an AOS with Seraphon Christmas Battle Box. Looking forward to see a potential fourth edition reveal from Nepticon. Oh. I haven't, I haven't got caught in a video game since Battle of Earth. M Battle of Middle Earth expansion. Um. Man, I really need to mix up more of this khaki stuff. are you watching uh, Dream League? Maybe not because Liquid just dropped out. Um, hello. I ordered the Ranger plus Masterclass video. Was I supposed to receive a link to the videos when I placed the order or does that get sent later? Oh, you should get an email from something at necropolis.miniac.co or actually it's at thinkific.com. You should get an email from at th something, uh, something at thinkific.com and it should ask you to make a password to log in to your account. And it'll be the email you used when creating an account to check out on the website. Unfortunately, not all of my non-Helldivers time is trying to finish stuff for Adepticon. Very nice, very nice. Cool. 
So I gave this guy an oil wash. And I kind of oil washed everything. Um, other than the green. I, I had finished the green prior to the oil wash because I was just painting at home and I didn't really care what I was going to do. But I like washed like the metal and stuff. Um, and that kind of gave it a nice initial kind of crusty brown shading. If it... If I were to give you a thing, what would be the ideal day? The meet and greet? Um, yeah, probably. Or, I mean, you're going to see me bumming around, like 100%. Come May, I'm going to be useless for a while. New progressions. New progression progression server for EverQuest. Oh my god, dude. EverQuest. Holy cow. No, that was bad. That was not the right color. Okay, luckily we can feather that out. All right, now that we've got a nice little solid base to start from, now we can start just increasing the brightness of this mixture that I made and just do one or two simple highlights. Easy. I'm always gonna start in the back of the model just so whatever color I'm mixing now. I can like test it on the back of the model first. It's a little too bright, I feel like. I still haven't seen Dune part two, and it's killing me. There's so much chatter on the internet about it, and I really want to see it, but I'm seeing it this weekend. So I have to kind of wait a little bit. I freaking can't wait, because I'm only seeing good things about it. It was epic. I won't be making it to Adepticon this year. Got to focus on paying off the medical debt, but hopefully next year I'm supposed to be done with it. Congratulations, Guild Line, man. It's kind of a big deal. Um, I bet that's going to feel super good when you finish that. Scott, are you ready for a Crisis 1 remaster? It's about the right timing. I feel like we've already gotten a Crisis 1 remaster. Am I wrong about that? Maybe I just saw like an announcement for it like several years ago and it never came out. Um, no, I was never a fan of the original Crisis 1. I mean, I, I was a fan of it, in that I played the single player campaign and it was it was good and I enjoyed that. But the game the ones that I really grinded were two and three. Um, but uh, I know a lot of people have a lot of good feelings for uh, the first one. Um, what up the uh, the Spain the plastic? <laughs> I can't I can't do it. Uh, listening to Tup and man, I might have to get working on my Escher. Heck yeah, dude. Uh, did you know that Dune canonically takes place in the same universe as Saving Private Ryan? I did not know that, but now I do. <laughs> I suddenly see Dune Part 1. I did, however, see the Lynch movie on Christmas break. Oh, okay. That's That that, that one is pretty interesting and weird, uh, as are a lot of David Lynch movies. Um, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Ryan Gosling kills it when he blows up the Ultramarines with the A-bomb. Ryan Gosling. Going to see it Sunday. I'm so pumped. That's basically what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it on a... Uh, on uh, what? Saturday, I think. I'm going to clean this brush. Oh. It's giving me grief. Honestly, the Lynch movie isn't bad. It's just different. A buddy of mine read through all the books, so it's interesting to get some cross comparison on the differences. Yeah, I think um, 
I think compared to Denny Villeneuve, I actually don't know how to pronounce his name. I, I heard Stephen Colbert, Colbert pronounce his name and it was like bizarre. Um, I think when you compare Lynch's to Denny's, um, I think it's worse. Um, and I think even, I think David Lynch would even say that because whenever he talks about Dune, the movie he made, it's like his biggest disappointment because he did not demand final cut on that movie, apparently. Which means as a director, you have final say before the movie goes to theaters and gets a physical release and stuff like that. And so someone else must have had that, probably production, probably some other team, and they made some changes to it that he probably wasn't a super big fan of. I don't know if he ever went, to, went into detail about what those changes were or what he didn't like about the final cut. Um, but it, it is good for what it is. I, I, I did enjoy it uh, watching it. But yeah, you guys see Doom Part 1, man. It's uh, fucking great. It's fucking great. Uh, the Lynch movie remains goaded. I don't know if it's goaded. Other than the fact that Lynch needs to make stuff up because he thought it was cooler. It's weird, but much more epic feeling. I'm going to disagree with you there. I definitely don't think it's epic feeling. Or more epic feeling, at the very least. I think that, I think the fact that so much of it is just explained to you uh, really kind of is a bummer. But like, how, how else supposed to make that movie in one movie without explaining a ton of shit? So I kind of see where he's coming from. Um, yeah, I can't wait for, I can't wait to see number two. I don't know if you guys feel the same way about this, but I kind of feel like we're living in the time period where we're seeing these movies and a decade from now, they're going to be as highly regarded as like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I don't know if you agree with me there, but like, I don't know how people felt about the Lord of the Rings trilogy while it was happening. You know, it's like, oh, this is going to be this huge thing that shapes like a generation of kids or like whatever, or like, it's like, you know, critically acclaimed. Is that the same thing for these set of movies? I don't know. We'll find out. I think Dune is capable of that. I love Dune Part 1, but Denny's version of the Harkonnen looked like dog shit. Probably the biggest attraction for me. Interesting, okay. Uh, I fell asleep during the first new one. Oh, that's sad. Uh, Lord of the Rings felt epic when it was happening. I can't, honestly, I can't really remember. Um, I just remember it, uh, I just remember liking it because I was a little kid, you know? It wasn't like, this is going to be history, you know? Yeah, they're definitely a pretty big deal, and I feel like Dune's a pretty big deal as well, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I bet the Garfield movie that comes out this year will sweep the awards. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, you're welcome, Songer. To be fair, the books for Dune are as important for sci-fi genre like Lord of the Rings was for fantasy. That I don't know about, um, but um, that's interesting to hear. Yeah, I'm just curious what you guys think. If it's as big a deal as um, Lord of the Rings or not. <laughs> Wait, they made a movie about those popcorn buckets? Those popcorn buckets are definitely weird. I don't know. One of those situations where it's just like, what were you guys thinking? What do you think this was gonna look like? I think someone like edited a photo of a poor guy who was like wearing one of those shirts or wearing one of those popcorn buckets. And he's like, he like, they changed the shirt to say something like, I'm just here to have sex with the popcorn bucket or something like that. Um, that's what it is, <laughs> yeah, Evan said it. Um, as someone who loves the Dune books, I'm very happy with the new movies. My only complaint is that the dramatic irony with Dr. Yue was not a huge plot point in the first movie. Sure. Uh, yeah, you're probably right about that, Mr. Funkadizzle. From my perspective, to this day, I'm very surprised when people I have met never have seen at least the first Lord of the Rings movie. 
they were such a, a cultural staple at the time and the, uh, when they came out. But if someone told me they had never seen the Doom movies or had no intention of watching them, I wouldn't bat an eye. I don't know if that's necessarily an indication of how epic and grandiose the movie is. I think you need to give the movie time to become a little bit more epic. I think one thing that's actually really interesting watching the movies again, the Lord of the Rings movies with my wife, is just how how much the movies operate as a um, as like one big movie. You know, there are so many through lines in all three movies, um, so many storylines that are continued. And like when when you're rewatching Lord of the Rings as someone who's seen it so many times. Um, and you're like, you're seeing people say all these things and drop all these hints and you're like, oh man, I know where this goes. You know, it's like, I, I get it. I, I'm in on it. Um, but if you've never seen it, those lines of dialogue and those moments in the film are, they're largely meaningless. Um, but when you watch them with the context of all three movies, it feels epic. And so I kind of wonder if, you know, that kind of same thing would happen with uh, a movie like Dune, you know, like when the third one comes out, there there are through lines uh, throughout, throughout all the movies that you can appreciate once you've seen all of them. I don't know. Is there a version? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I feel you, man. I don't know why the bass in the Lord of the Rings movies is so fucking insane, but it is so loud. It is so loud. It's crazy. If you could only have one brand of chocolate milk for the rest of your life, which one would it be and why? Probably Yoohoo. Uh, just because I drank it a lot as a kid and I have fond memories. It's a weird flavor though. I have friends that either refuse to watch Lord of the Rings. Oh, and now it's gone. Um, anyone watching Has Been Hotel on Amazon Prime? It's an animated musical and started out on YouTube. No, I've never even heard of that. <laughs> the one that has zero milk in it. I just can't. I can't think of another. I don't. I don't know of another chocolate milk brand. If I mean, I guess Novaltine. Ovaltine. Novaltine. Ovaltine is one. I've never had it. And Nes Nesquik, I think, is the other one. Again, I haven't, I don't, I don't drink, I don't drink uh, chocolate milk a whole lot. But I did have a staple or a, a stint with uh, YooHoo when I was little. Relax, Evan. Jesus Christ. Um, all right, have fun walk walking your puppy, Edric Knight. <laughs> it's a you use a chocolate drink, not nah, chocolate milk. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if I agree on movies getting longer. I mean, I instantly can think of classics like The Godfather or Fiddly on the Roof that go on. Uh, what do you mean, Digital Soul? Did I say something that I didn't mean to say? <laughs> oh, wait, someone said that their movies are longer now? Don't forget to drink your... Has anyone ever seen a YouTube video called Circle Teen? It does feel like movies are trying to be longer just simply because they're trying to compete with the amount of story development that can occur in a TV show, which is definitely on the rise, you know, in popularity. Like TV shows are becoming more and more people's preferred media of consumption. And it is because of that. Uh, I think it's because of that. You can just see more character development throughout the movie or throughout the uh, media. But um, I don't know. I still personally prefer watching uh, movies. Yeah, dude. Good, good 90 minutes. Jay, I'm right there with you, man. I 
we'll have a good 90 minute movie. Part two is nearly a two hour series. I think people like shows more because shows can afford to not explain everything as soon as it comes up. Whereas movies feel like they have to explain fucking everything. That's definitely not true of all movies. Uh, like that's definitely a bad movie kind of thing. Like that's like a we're gonna cater to like people who have zero attention spans kind of modern day thing. Like th there's definitely movies that do not feel the need to do that. Um, I don't know. I don't know like how common it is though. It could be like the majority majority of the time people do uh, movie creators do that. I'm not sure though, but not all movies suffer from that though. That's all I'm saying. But that that could contribute uh, to enjoying TV shows more for sure. For sure. Bobby was great. I haven't seen Avatar yet. I haven't seen, what movie, I haven't seen, honestly, The Godfather I haven't seen yet. Um, trying to think of movies I haven't watched because I'm afraid of the length. Uh, Godfather I haven't seen, and also um, that other one. It's not a classic one, but the, the newest James Bond movie is like fucking insanely long. I haven't seen that one either. What's it called? Is it called like Die Another Day or some shit like that? Modern movies. Yeah, okay, I got you. Master and Commander. Is Master and Commander a TV show or a movie? Can't remember. How about Citizen Kane? No Time to Die is okay, kind of mid-ass writing. <laughs> Watch Godfather, but pass on The Irishman, IMO. Honestly, I didn't really understand The Irishman. I mean, not that I didn't understand it. I just didn't understand why it needed to exist. Because I'm pretty sure the exact same director was Scorsese, right? He made another gangster movie. That does, that does, that the exact same kind of movie. It's like beat for beat, not, maybe not beat for beat, but it feels so similar. When I was watching The Irishman, I was like, why does this exist? This is, not, this is not different enough to be worthwhile. Um, so I didn't finish The Irishman, but maybe I need to give it another chance because I know a lot of people that really like it. Movie, it's a movie? Okay. One of the best movies ever. Fuck, man, I gotta watch it. Scott, you need to watch Argyle. Strike Your Alley. Silly, fun movie that doesn't take itself seriously. Scorsese has made a lot of mob movies. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Here, I'm gonna look up Argyle. What is Argyle? I rewatched um, Ice Pirates. Argyle. What the fuck? It's not even showing up in my. Uh... Wait, 1948? By Cy Enfield? Probably not that one. Um. Oh, Mark was a video painting Cotter guys? I guess that would, this is definitely his kind of thing. All right, see you, Flossmith. Goodfellas is about is all about the gangsters being cool and having fun. The Irishman is his first movie about gangsters where he really delves into how the life isn't fun and they're all miserable and alone. I mean, that definitely comes across in Goodfellas. Is that the one I'm thinking of? I've definitely, definitely seen Goodfellas. I just don't know if Scorsese made that one. It's a recent Matt Vaughn film. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, with Cavill in it. Okay, now I remember what you're talking about. Paint on my wet palette is drying out very fast. Much faster than it normally dries out. He did Goodfellas. Okay, I have, yeah, I haven't seen The Godfather. So it must have been it must have been uh, Goodfellas. 
the one that I was thinking about. But you're definitely right. There's definitely some gangsters having fun in that movie. Joe Pesci is just like the greatest gangster man. Oh, there's a lot of really good gangster actors, but uh, Joe Pesci from Goodfellas really sticks with me for some reason. Maybe because he's such a dirty, rotten bastard in that movie. Scorsese did Kylie Chance of Meatballs. I know he's got he's got quite the uh, the filmography. I don't know how many Scorsese movies I've seen. Maybe like five or six. Did you know that Dune takes place in the same universe as Goodfellas? Uh This is true. Gangs in New York, that's one I haven't seen, but that is definitely one I want to see because of the good old, the man, what's his name? You know what I'm talking about. Canonically. <laughs> if you like foreign films, uh, you don't mind subtitles. DDL, thank you. Uh, Takashi Miike's films about the Yakuza are pretty fucking fire. I definitely don't mind um, foreign films. I used to mind them. But I've uh, gotten over myself. Which is not to say that people can't dislike foreign films, um, but uh, my reasons for not watching them were not super valid. <laughs> Let's just say that. Gangs in New York is just the Butcher's Guild Ball team. <laughs> I'm one of the few who think Gangs in New York is overrated. Are we just kind of going through uh, all of Scorsese's uh, film right, films right now? I don't know what happened to this tabard, but it looks uh, it did not get anywhere near chocolatey brown enough. Scorsese did a mini X master class, yeah, sure. Scott's hard pants. That was clever. Okay, guys, if your fucking jizz melts the carpet and turns it into a rock solid fucking object, you gotta go to the doctor. Let me tell y'all, okay? But you're right, it was pretty clever. <laughs> Yours does it? The fucking two, two people instantly said that, dude. Two people. I was like, wait, you're not an alien? <laughs> I haven't seen Dust Till Dawn either. But I know that's a pretty popular... That's always one that comes up and people are like, you should see this vampire movie. You haven't seen Dust Till Dawn? Holy shit, I've not seen that. You're a vampire fan? You haven't seen Dust Till Dawn? Are there vampires in that? I actually have no idea. But no, it's apparently also a gangster movie. Have I seen Taxi Driver? Yeah, that movie is fucked, man. That movie is rough to watch. Snake inspired instead of bats, but yeah, vampires. Okay, the snaky vampires. Oh, it's a Robert Rodriguez movie, dude? Okay, I'm down. Yeah, I know that taxi driver is Scorsese.
Scott's a little weird. Scott's a little weird squid man for sure, dude. For fucking sure, bud. Absolutely, I'm a little weird squid man. I don't know what the fuck. Dude, did Scorsese did Spy Kids, dude? Oh my god. The first Spy Kids movie is a fucking trip. You guys seen that movie? That movie is insane, dude. Insane. It's, it's, uh, I don't even know what to say about it. It's crazy. Fucking Elijah Wood. Yeah, yeah, Robert, Robert Rodriguez. You're right. He did do, he did do Spy Kids. I forgot about that. Although it would have been way better if fucking Scorsese did it. <laughs> Flip was a madman. Help us save us. <laughs> nice. Nice reference. Do you think God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he created here on earth? Dude, yeah, fucking deep, deep writing in Spy Kids 1. It's Machete Universe, yes. Machete kill. Wolf of Wall Street is a garbage film, change my mind. Not many movies can like educate in the way that Wolf of Wall Street educates while also entertaining in like a really good, in like a really great way. But if obviously if you don't think it was entertaining, then my point is moot, but it took a really complicated situation that I didn't understand, uh, which doesn't say much, um, and helped me to understand like why the uh, housing market crashed, which then led to the crash of the stock, stock market. Um, and it was also entertaining while I did it. So that, I think that was a, pr that was a pretty big feat. <laughs> it's your fault, Sturban. Okay? You caused this. But you're right. I need to give, I need to continue painting. My next Necromunda battle is against um, some Orlocks? Ga Orlock gang? Evan started it. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I totally mistook uh, the big short with the Wolf of Wall Street. You're totally right. My bad. My bad. My bad. Oh, I have seen the Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, it's all right. That's not a Scorsese movie. Now I understand why it's coming up. What'd you make for lunch, Mike? Scott is the big short Scott. Inglorious Bastards is a comfy movie for you. Do you like people getting scalped? Hud, does that bring you comfort? If that, if the answer to that question is yes, I'm not sure if I want to hang out with you at Adepticon, you know? <laughs> subs and a cup of fruit. Mmm, subs. Mike? Mike's minis? You making subs? Mike subs? When it's Nazis. Grazie. <laughs> I mean, if people are getting scalped, they're Nazis. I mean, even if they're Nazis, I'm not going to enjoy that. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy it for the reason that I enjoy watching horror movies, right? Which is the, the shock and awe factor. I, uh... I watched, um... What did I watch? Well, Van Helsing recently. Pretty sure Scorsese got that one too, right? Mm, that movie's kind of fun. I wish I still had it. It's not, it has nothing to do with empathy. It has everything to do with, this is just a gross thing to witness. <laughs> yeah, I got you, HUD. It's a good, bad movie, yeah, for sure. 
I watched Guardians of the Galaxy last night. Nice. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah. The movie's fun. good enough for a fucking loincloth. I can relax. All right, let's get some highlights on these rips. Which I have the perfect colors on my palette for right now. Did anyone ask about favorite movies? No, but uh, feel free to share. If you want to shock and awe, then watch a Serbian film. Nah, my, my days of watching movies like that are over. I uh, luckily, made it out alive before watching a Serbian film. But I've seen seen plenty of terrible movies that I wish I could forget, but I will never be able to forget. I mean, there are some horror movies that got some pretty fucked up shit in them, don't get me wrong. You and your fucking rope. <laughs> Oh, um, this is the sincere stuff worked. I can't really remember. I did. I did watch Guardians of the Galaxy three. The one thing I do remember is the part with Nathan Fillion where like they're breaking into like this largely flesh like facility like it looks like an organ like a living organ <clears throat> and my issue with it is that the whole thing just seems so ham-fisted it's like what do the guards wear in a facility that's largely a flesh-like organ it's like oh of course they wear a suit that looks like flesh it's like dude come on That's that's a pretty small gripe. What up, Teague? Uh, okay, epic sci-fi movies that kind of fell flat. Have I seen Rebel Moon? Yeah, I've seen Rebel Moon. Rewatched everything, everywhere, all at once. First feeling, it felt like thirty minutes long. Rewatched for like five hours long. <laughs> Possible hot take, Rebel Moon was ass. I uh, I don't know if it's a hot take. I don't know what the general consensus is in that movie. Um, but yeah, uh, that movie was, was uh, you know, it has some good things in it, but uh, it's largely pretty bad. <laughs> wearing flesh theming Scott I understand I get I get that it's it's theming um speaking of fucked up shock and awe I checked out the Netflix Dahmer show with Evan Peters a couple months back yeah that, that, we, we, we saw that in my life a while back it's pretty good I like Rebel Moon yeah you're definitely allowed to like Rebel Moon there's nothing wrong with that um Giving you Munda Fever, Green Mountain? <laughs> Van Sar player. You know, what's what's interesting in you saying that, uh, Green Mountain, is that the very first Necromunda box I ever bought was a Van Sar one. It was the first box I ever assembled as well. And that's when I learned that assembling Necromunda minis is a pain in the ass. Or at least that one was. 
You know, the Cotor box actually wasn't that bad, but the man, the Necromunda one was fucking awful. Sorry, the uh, the uh, Van Star one was awful. Um, hot take: Herbal Moon should have been a book adapted by someone else. Okay, I don't know why would why would it being a book make it better? Luckily for all of us, yeah. Yeah, we don't, ha we don't have a Van Sar player in our uh, campaign right now. More time to play out the story. Sure, yeah, okay. Vampire heads would look sick on Van Sar. It's kind of a fun idea. I don't really know what that would look like. Kind of like sci-fi-ish vampires. Which I'm not complaining about. Isn't it just Underworld? <laughs> no, I don't think Underworld is as sci-fi as Van Sargat. Yeah, I saw those gnomes, those those Blood Bowl gnomes come out. That's pretty hype. This paint needs to be more. No, I'm saying nice. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. It isn't perfect. Just keep the head off. Fuck me, man. Instead of the head, use the Dune popcorn bucket. Oh my god, dude. Hilarious. Uh, you see that Mantic Games preview for their Halo skirmish game? I'm interested to see where it goes. Love me some spacemen. I did not see that. It's cool. The deepest I ever got into Halo was uh, Combat Evolved. Because I, I never had a console as a young child, and so I had a computer, though. So I played essentially the first campaign. That's, that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. If they're, if they're demoing it at Depticon, then I will for sure be playing it. I mean, not for sure, but I do demo quite a few games. At least I did last year. Poor Scott. Yep. Hey, everyone! Just found out there's a D and D skirmish game. Anyone try it? Yeah, it uh called Onslaught. Made by Wizkids. 
when that game came out, uh, everyone hated um, the creators of uh, D and D because they were trying to make D and D. They're trying to make it impossible for you to make your own Dungeons and Dragons setting. Um, I have a vivid memory of this because I am friends with the developers at WizKids and they wanted to come over to the stream, the gaming stream, to show the game off. And then we streamed it and I was in Hawaii at the time. Um, and then we like, you know, posted a, uh, posted a picture of the VOD I don't know. We posted a, a link to the stream on my Facebook, and everyone shit on me so hard. They're like, "How could you support this dog shit company when they are doing this to us?" And I was like, "What are you guys talking about? Like, what are they doing?" And uh, yeah, it's not even the same company. Wizkids is not even the same company that makes D and D. They just made Onslaught, and but everything related to uh, D and D at that time was probably rightfully so getting crapped on. Um, but yeah, that was that was an interesting experience. The OGL debacle. That's that's the term. 8-bit weather. Thanks for the raid. Uh, Rufus Kit says it's even worse than that. They want to encourage you to make your own D&D content, but they did not want you to own your content. Okay, so it's it's uh, Blizzard and the... Oh, man, what's the tool you can use to make custom maps in Warcraft 3? There's like a thing you have to sign when you start using that tool that anything you make in this tool is owned by Blizzard. It kind of kind of reminds me of that map editor. Yo yo, WizKids and D&D Beyond until recently both got screwed. Everyone assumed they were part of. That's what it is. WOTC. They crazy backpedal, but they lost a lot of face there. Yeah, I bet they did. I bet they did. It was in the TOs of the Reforged game. Ricky, thank you. Um, you're right about that. Did Prime subs go away? It's not letting me resub with Prime. I don't think so. I think Amazon still owns Twitch. I don't know if they would get rid of that. Yeah, Ricky, you're totally right. They didn't want another Dota to happen. <laughs> uh, speaking of, does your name have the word Ricky in it because you are a fan of Dota? Um, all right. That's enough highlighting on the cloth. Uh, the black is done. The brown is done. The green is done. The um, metal needs a highlight. And then we need to do the base as well. So we'll do the metal highlight. And oh, I got to prime and paint the head. OK, yeah, we'll do the head. Blizzard is evil. <laughs> Rolls Royce says that I always felt like that was a Hasbro decision or Hasburo. I don't know what that, what that is, and not a WOTC call. <laughs> Ricky Papa was the name of my troll mage in my vanilla WoW guild. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what am I doing right now? Things and stuff. Metal highlights. Oh no, I'll do the rust on the base first, and then I'll do the metal highlights on both at the same time. Let's do that. Let's make it better. Let's make it better, Rufus. <clears throat> Archivists, what up, yo? I'm painting Cawdor. <laughs> Ayo! <laughs> Excited to hear you delve into the Star Wars RPG. I, I played it. And banned. 
No test tube spinner for your paints? Nah. Uh, we played the first six encounters of that Star Wars RPG. We didn't finish the uh, the boss battle, but we uh, we finished everything else. Um, and it was my first, I call it my first real time DMing. At least it felt that way. Um, it was good. I had a lot of fun. The Almighty Spaz, thanks for the sub. Uh, current archivists. The first session went great, honestly. So like the the back of the booklet has like a thing you read, like a typical title crawl that you would see um, in a Star Wars movie. Uh, and because I have some video editing skills, I just made the title crawl so we could watch it with the music and the Star Wars logo and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun. And it took like three hours to get through six out of seven encounters. I did not think we'd go that fast. You could definitely finish it in one go if like you were more focused than we were um, or had more time for sure. But it was really good. Everyone had a good time. I felt like I, felt like I DM'd well. Um, and that's, that's more of a testament to the system than it is my skills. The system made it very easy to like have interesting and varied things happen. It was good though. I think I think we all want to keep playing. <laughs> you have to read it out loud like the old time radio news person all the one shot podcast. I could have done that. Uh yes, I've I'm, I'm aware of vortex mixers. I'm kind of curious how different the other ones are. There's a there's a Dathomir module? Oh my god. So the problem is that I want to play in the fucking game as well, dude. I don't, you know what? I don't actually know if I do, but I would, it sounds like I do. I love the fantasy fight game system for Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. They did an awesome long run real campaign of Edge of the Empire, which is the same system, but an outer rim. High. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do the DMing too good, you can never play now. <laughs> I don't know if I, if I did it too good. Um, yeah, we play the we play the Force and Destiny version. I'm kind of curious um, how the other versions differ. Edge of the Empire and Age of Rebellion, I believe they're called. So obviously, it uses the same kind of dice system with like the boost die and, and the setback die and stuff like that. But obviously, like there are other things that are different about it. Just using some dirty down rust right now. If you're curious what this pro this lovely rusting product is, just different skills, trees, race, class. Okay, I got you. I got you. My recommendation for the Star Wars RPG is to get your players a ship as soon as you finish the intro adventure. If you don't already have one, treat the ship like a character and don't be afraid to have scoundrels try and steal it. Oh, that's a fun idea, actually. Um, could totally do something like that. You ran an alien RPG over the weekend? That's fucking cool. <laughs> what are my thoughts on Relic Blade? Um, I demoed the game, it's gonna be almost three years ago, at Adapticon. Um, and I remember enjoying it. I don't remember why I enjoyed it, but for the longest time, there haven't been models in the game that have like really been like me. Like, oh my God, I need these models. Kind of the same way I feel about 40K. Except not anymore, because I, I have a scheme that I really care and, and have a cool idea for my army that I'm really excited about, genuinely. Um, but yeah, there haven't been any models in the range that are like, that really excite me. But then Malev just painted up a new box art for 
some new minis that I really, really dig. Um, and I think they're coming out, I think I think it's actually a Kickstarter live right now for Relic Blade. And it has some of the new like factions or whatever in it. And one of them is the one I like a lot. Uh, yeah, Xander Zone said today it dropped. Okay, very cool. On TTRPGs, GW is releasing a starter version of Wrath and Glory. Okay, cool. I really like the starter version of that RPG. It really helped me as someone who's not very familiar uh, figure it out. Necromancer's Palette gifted five subs. Thank you, sir. If uh, if you got a sub from Necromancer's Palette, make sure to thank him in the chat. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support. I mean, I think that it'd be really cool to get to play in an RPG that's like a GW one, uh, just because of like the amazing miniatures they have. Um, you could like really make a super nice character, you know? Necro Joe, what up Necro Joe? Well, thank you for supporting me on Patreon and here on Twitch as well. I appreciate that, my dude. You're awesome. All right. I'm gonna add a little bit of rust effect to, you know what, I'm gonna try something weird. I'm gonna take some of this rusting effect and I'm gonna mix it with enough water to make it a better wash. Cause it doesn't really wash, it dries too fast. Um, which is fine because it looks gloopy and nasty. Uh, but I wanna, I wanna see if I can make it more of a wash, and just see what happens. So I know when you like, when you thin it out with water, cool things happen. It like gets, it gets grimy and nasty. So I'm gonna, let's see what happens here. Get a nice amount of it in the brush, and we'll kind of like wash it into these chains here. I'm certainly not the first person to try this, but um. I've never tried it personally, so let's see what happens. Yeah, when you like thin it out with water or when you try to wipe it away with water, it creates some really cool effects. So let's see, I'm going to meet myself and then dry this just so we can get an idea for what's happening. This Bane of Plastic says he backed his first miniature game the other week, Song of Ice and Fire Tactics Games. Nice. That's cool. I am really excited to check out that rule set, obviously, uh, being a fan of the other game. All right, here we are. Here we're, we're looking at the chain. We, we washed the chain in a very watery version of Dirty Down. And there's some cool things happening. I, I'd be curious to see what would happen if we did a higher concentration mixture. But like you can see like there's that bright orange line right there at the top of the, the ball. And then there's some lovely grime on the chain itself. Um, oh, there's even there's some brighter orange in, you can't really see it, unfortunately. Um, here, my fucking camera is being an idiot. Um, am I cooking up anything for GD? Uh, I'm not. Um, I know I said I was going to paint something this year on the podcast. I, I do fully realize that. And, you know, there are a lot of things in this hobby that people feel compelled to do. And I'm trying my hardest to say no to that as often as I can. Um, I don't want to feel like I have to do anything. Obviously, this is my job. And so I have to make videos. That I totally understand. But, um... When it comes to what I'm painting, like I'm just gonna paint whatever the fuck I wanna paint, you know? I'll take a sponsor every now and then that has me paint one of their products, but otherwise, I'm just gonna paint whatever is most exciting at the, in the moment. And at the moment, competitive painting is not, not, getting me, not getting me excited. Especially Gold Demon competitive painting, fuck that shit. Um. Camera, yeah, it's nice. It's got a little bit of a, a lean. I can see it. 
All right. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the dirty down into my watery mixture here. And then we're gonna give it another go. All right, let me put the paint can back on. What up, total 420? All right, so we went with a heavier mixture today, or right now, let's see what happens. Um, with this gun, we've already done an oil wash. which is going to get totally obscured by this, but it's fine. It's all an experiment. I feel like whenever I paint a model, it's an experiment. All right, let me dry this again, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, check this out. You know, there's not a lot of dirty down in the bottle when you buy it, right? And it, it is quite expensive, but man, if you thin it, it works great still. And I would argue it works better as a wash, um, which I mean, kind of looks better. Like this, the, the base just looks super sloppy, which is definitely a look in and of itself, but that also looks super good. I don't know, I like it a lot. All right, we're gonna apply a little bit more to the ball chain weapon itself. Yeah, Grim Dark Dork. I uh, I do a very similar thing to the the Necromunda base um, that I have here. I don't use a sponge, but a sponge would obviously work great. Um, I uh, I just use a paintbrush, but it uh, does the job. Hey Scott, I found his organizer for Ninjan, for Ninjan Horde of Paints. Are you okay with sending a link? It's a Kickstarter type. I saw it as an ad on Instagram. I mean, I think if you try to link something, it is uh, just the Nightbot is just going to eat the link. So I don't know if uh, maybe Evan can like allow you to send a link for a moment or another mod. I don't know if there's any other mods though. Okay, uh, I visited Browser Wargaming a few weeks ago and picked up some Dirty Down. Ali is a big fan of it too. Uh, I made sure my mini hat could eat. Nice, nice. Nice, cool. Appreciate that professional paint liquor. All right, so now I'll take some water here and we'll, uh, we'll wipe away a lot of the rust on the surface. And the water like mixes with the dirty down. Obviously I'm not like removing all of it, but um, it like mixes with the dirty down and creates this, I don't know, a really nice patina on the metal. And you can leave some of that stuff on the surface as well. 
I'll leave some of those chunkers on. Yeah, once that dries, it has like this really nice like surface rust look. I think it looks really good. Really good. All right, let's do some silver highlights. <laughs> Did you pronounce Kira's name wrong? That's how you really show you're with Miniac? Yeah, no shit. One doll paint as good as Scott. I, I believe it. I believe it. You do not need to be an amazing painter to paint as good as me. <laughs> Beat up the brush tip that gets in good fellas. Yeah, that's just a crappy synthetic brush. I'm not super concerned with the tip. Is there a particular brand of UV resin that I recommend? No, I don't, I don't have one, but for small water effects. Oh, that's never happened before. The, uh, the cap came off inside and I just poured a bunch of silver paint onto my palette. Um, when I do small water effects, I don't use UV resin, although I, that definitely has a, an advantage over um, what I'm about to suggest. I just use Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. Uh, it's a little bit easier to mess with, but it's not as good as UV resin, though. How much of the gang have you painted already? Every time I check in the stream, it's a new ganger. A decent amount. Um, if we don't count the guys that I just converted their weapons, because they're pretty much done, I just need to repaint the one third of their weapon that I converted. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gangers painted, and I need to paint another three, another four. Um, that my my those are my starting guild, my starting gang. This is this is like midway through the campaign uh, gang. A little bit, a little bit more beefed up than a thousand credits. <laughs> Weird. It's strange that it happened to you as well, OSW. Um, did I do a video on it? I didn't do a video on it explicitly, but I've definitely used it in many videos. In fact, I bet if you go watch my uh, basing series. Like where I uh, make four bases in a uh, in a video, you'll you'll find one that you might even find it in multiple videos that I use Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. Scorsese did Mod Podge.
just ordered Imperium Maledictum. Thanks for the reminder. I'll get that on Friday. I saw someone mention that earlier in the stream. That, that's like their, that's an RPG thing, right? the middle of the base with this kind of stuff. New R yeah, new RPG, nice. Grungy base. All right, that's a finished ganger aside from a painted base rim and a head. Scott, am I doing any battle reports for Necromunda? I think it would definitely be cool if I did. Um, nope, none planned at the moment. I think at the very least, what I would love to do with Necromunda is to do a live stream where we uh, like play the game on. Oh, no, the gaming live stream. Um, okay. It's prime. But I think it'd be cool, honestly, to do like a kill your friend style battle report just because that, that game just looks so impressive on the table. There's, especially with John Schaefer's fucking terrain. Um, who's the guy who's like basically managing and running the campaign for us. He, uh, he has a bunch of amazing terrain. You put a bit of sponge in one of those sleeves. Yeah, that or, or tweezers what might work. It's just, I guess if you put it in the thing, the problem is that when you use tweezers at least, you never know if like there's like a stray bit that's like kind of like stabbing the underside of the model with silver paint or something like that. Did you say live Necromunda stream at Adepticon? No, I did not say that. <laughs> live stream with who? Uh, anyone, any, like whoever I'm playing at the week. What are you most excited about for Adepticon this year? I, honestly, it's kind of always the same thing. I'm just really excited to see my see my friends. Um, see my friends and demo a bunch of really cool games um, and just see what's going on in the, in, in the industry. It's just, it feels so good to hang out at Adepticon and uh, just like kind of be amongst it, you know? That's what I enjoy. All right, um, I want to prime my guy, my leader. I'm gonna do that. I haven't played Evan yet, so I could, I could play Evan on stream. I don't know if the way the, the campaign works is you're supposed to play everyone at least once before you replay someone else. I don't think that's how it works because I think it. Uh, whoever lost the previous round gets to challenge someone in the next round, and there are no requirements for you to challenge someone who you haven't played before. Um, what are you guys most excited about for Adapticon this year?
Evan says, we can challenge who we like to my understanding. I think you could back to back someone. Okay, I got you. I mean, like that gaff you had with the lid coming off from inside earlier, I had the same problem happen to my cap for my Merlin's magic meeting this past week. Weird. Yeah, it is weird. Someone else also said that it happened to them recently. I think it was OSW Zen Kiki. I want to play some games. I want to play some games too. Oh, you know what I'm really excited for at Epicon? The uh, best of one. Best of one. Uh, fucking Flesh and Blood Blitz tournament we're going to do. The secondhand mini vendor got so many minis last year for dirt cheap. Yeah, dude. That's a good point. I don't know if I'm bringing 2k points of AOS. Well, what I know is in typical me fashion, I'm going to bring far too many minis, not use any of them. I'll use like 10% of them. I wish I could be kidnapped. I wish I could be kidnapped. I wish I could be kidnapped me and bring me to Adepticon. <laughs> Nice, Rufus. What's your, uh, what's your Shatterpoint team? Long Wars doubles tourney is always a peak at Epicon for me. Nice. We should be playing, oh yeah, that'd be cool. Playing the Necromunda event, yeah. Oh, oh, the event at Adepticon. Oh, I thought you meant playing a campaign game at Adepticon. Which we could also do. Just the starter box good guys for now. Gotcha, it, they aren't bad. If I'm being totally honest. Whoa! Um, I might pick up the Night Sisters on sale, but we'll have time to paint them. Gotcha. Are you running the other games April this year? Yeah, I might. I might do it. I just might not like announce it officially on my channel. But yeah, I'd like to do that every year. I think. Try to meet Maniac for the third year at Epicon. You know, I feel like it's gotta be possible, right? Oh God. Freaking love priming a conversion. Just all comes together. Or it doesn't and you're sad. Um, I kind of feel like I'm not hard to find at Depicon, but I guess I am. If Ash hasn't found me for three years. Every time I see you, you seem real busy with stuff, so I don't bug. Okay, that, that's what it is. I got you. I got an apron for painting because I saw yours with all the patches, but now you're not wearing it. <laughs> sometimes I wear it, sometimes I don't wear it. Uh, Ash, just charge in. <laughs>
Benjo. Thanks for the sub. Vanya Atesh, yeah, I have a, there's two videos on my channel about that exact subject, advice for people who are looking to uh, compete. I think one is done, I actually can't remember. Still recording. Oops. I'm a leader prime. Benjo says, started painting the warrior a couple of days ago and having a great time. Congrats on finishing the Kickstarter. Thank you very much. And I am glad to hear that you are enjoying the uh, Kickstarter. Okay, my camera is doing this thing sometimes where it just like randomly zooms in like a fuckload. Um. My plan for finding Miniac at the con is a foolproof, is foolproof, foolproof? Get a box and stick a rope, make a trap, place a vampire mini in a trap and wait. Easy. That'll work for sure. <laughs> I kind of met you last year. It was awkward. I tried to hold an elevator for you as you had luggage and the elevator door is still closed on your luggage, my arm and the shoe. <laughs> Classic, dude. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Whoop. <laughs> yes, and that <laughs> that will be remembered for my entire life. Yes. The one challenging part about meeting people in real life is that everyone knows who I am because they've seen my face a million times, but I don't know anyone else. Like, that happened a lot at Monte San Savino. Like, people were like, Scott! And I was like, you, my guy. Um, I didn't know anyone. Uh, so if you do, uh, want to chat at, at Epicon, which absolutely we should. Uh, just let me know what your internet moniker is and that'll help me to, to remember. Even if I met you a previous year, um, I struggled to remember stuff like that. Um, I met Neil deGrasse Tyson in Elevator once, nice. He checked my math homework. Hey, what's up? Too much got one for Scott. That's me. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. That's so funny. My wife showed it up like 45 seconds ago and then went outside to uh, go to the bathroom. Didn't lock the door. Door's been locked all day long. One minute later, Amazon shows up to deliver a package during a live stream. What are the odds of that? What did I get? <sighs> or don't and make it more awkward. Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, yes, more of these things. The spongy, spongy brushes.
All right, so harder and Steenbeck enjoyers. The shtick with this system, Amazon showed up to deliver a package. Since I left? Yeah. So That's like, it would, well, no, I mean, I'd rather than leave it outside and not walking while I'm streaming. Oh. It's just funny how the entire day the door's locked, you show up, and then uh, uh, 30 seconds later they, they show up and you weren't even here. No, it was totally normal. Okay, so I'm not supposed to take this air, this needle out the back. Is, this, is that correct? That's the whole point of the system, right? Because I keep getting the needle stuck. Man, it's so zoomed in. Why is it so zoomed in? Ideally, okay. Keeps getting stuck for me. Like it's getting stuck like uh like back here. Oh, I forgot I can take the needle out of the front. Okay, yeah, that, that's obviously because there's no it doesn't it doesn't uh, have this ball in the end. All right. Summon Lesser Maker! Hard pants cam. Uh, I have no idea. I guess it could get stuck in the internal gaskets. Otherwise, I don't know. It's got to come out somehow. Yeah, I think it could come out the front with this particular uh, airbrush. I think the idea is you're never pulling paint into the back element of the brush. I think that's the whole idea. I could be wrong. <laughs> Ash just says airbrushes are the worst. <laughs> All right. Let's get this head painted. With whatever colors we have. Not going to be the same greens as the uh, ones we use to paint this dude, but I'm sure we can get close enough. I'm just gonna pull out some greens here and see what we can make of it. A lot of solid greens. Oh, I pulled out like a bright electric yellow already, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Nice, nice, nice. Anything else that I pulled out? No, it doesn't look like it. We need like a mid desaturated green. What is this? What is this? This is a straight up paint. This looks pretty good. There's a seal between the feed cup area and the trigger area. If you pull the needle backwards, the paint will get into the trigger area and behind down. Yes, that, that is the prevailing idea. Whether or not that actually happens remains to be seen. Hard to tell if there's, if there's uh, paint getting in the back area, honestly. It's really hard to see. This is, look at these two colors, dude. Look at these two colors. Come on, Vallejo. I watched a streamer do it live on Twitch once. It was that streamer me. <laughs> Mr. Funkin as well, I also do that. Just give it a couple good little tugs to loosen that bad boy up. Those are the same colors, surely. Matt Yi. They're slightly different. This one's a little bit more yellowy. But man, that's so dang close. I wonder if they ever like... 
I don't know, make a paint and then just like cross-reference it against their entire range to make sure they're not just remaking a paint that already exists. Clearly not. I think a little bit of this paint and a little bit of that desaturated green and we'll get that mid-tone right after. All right. Although. Okay, there it is, Jesus Christ. Um, we got that brown mask. Why don't we do a green mask this time and we'll do brown on the lower area. lower part is not going to need to get painted a whole lot. It's going to be largely obscured by the, uh, the coif. You know, I was at home and I was actually painting this dude. I needed to paint a head and I didn't have a head for him. Um, and so I, I did have the heads. I just didn't have them primed. And so I just painted the head with black paint and I painted it on the sprue. <laughs> just threw caution to the wind and it turned out fine. The green is popping. Thank you, Mr. Funky Dizzle. Chunky, dude. I'm actually going to base coat the skin and probably just finish the skin entirely before moving on with the green and brown stuff because there isn't a ton of skin and I will likely just ace everything if I try to do the skin after. Oops. Okay. What we got for skin tones in this range? This is a pretty good darker skin tone. Oh, that's an even better one. Oh, this one's good for the face. We'll do this one. Paint on sprue, straight to hell. I know, right? Sometimes the most important thing is just painting miniatures, you know? Because I was sitting at home and I was like, okay, I could not paint because you're not allowed to paint on a sprue, you know, or it's not a good idea. Or I could just do it and then paint. And so I, was, I figured, figured it's better to actually paint. <laughs> it kind of looks like a goblin striking. <laughs> it is too many painters as suicide is the Catholic Jesus Christ.
Exactly, Pink Tarek. Decided to listen to my own advice. I think he just has a little bit of forehead showing, and that is like literally it, other than his eye slots, which we are definitely going to keep black. A la Batman. Is there any other skin exposed apart from obviously his arms and shit? Darn think so. I painted a Wookiee Fluttercraft from Legion on Sprue, but that was because I did a wood grain effect using oil paints. Handling the vehicle would not have been possible due to the slow dry times. Okay. Seems reasonable. You can always pin the vehicle like on the bottom of the vehicle to a handle. Would that have been a solution? Yes, I did watch that video, HUD. Just called skin tone. <laughs> you got me with the outro? Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, and I think I've already said this on the stream, but I think Jay's gonna fucking destroy me in this challenge, but whatever I can do to get my Deldar painted, I will do. Or at least to make progress on them. Oh, did you ever finish that like anime Sisters of Battle inspired conversion and paint job you were doing for your friend? Have I picked a color for Vader's saber? Uh, last stream, uh, someone suggested that I do a Sith war sword. Um, and so I decided that I'll just do that. So the color for Vader's saber, which will just be a sword is going to be silver with like Sith runes in it. And I'm going to do a red, a cadmium red oil wash. So like all the, actually, you know what? I'll do what fucking El Miniaturista does. I'll, I'll wash it with white oil ink. And then, and then I will uh, hit it with a red fluo uh, to make it pop. That'd be sick actually. And he like, I love it when he dry brushes silver on top of like glowing red or glowing red orange. It looks so good. So I could do that with the sword too. That looked badass, dude. Uh, anime, this is a battle. Sounds like heresy. Wonderful heresy, but still. Oh, it's good to hear. I'm glad. You were going to suggest silver too? Nice. And then someone else in the chat said that I should paint the inside of his cloak like it was furry. And I'm just like, I'm not about that, dude. That sounds like a great idea. All right, let's mix some of this ochre with this brown. We'll do the hair too. Yeah. He's got some good stuff for sure.
Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Almost like you enjoy paint water at this point. I definitely don't enjoy it, but when I am like getting deep into the painting process, I kind of forget about what I'm doing. And so sometimes I will just like lick the brush as like a mental reset. I'll just like sit here and I've like caught myself, you know, I, I know I do it subconsciously because I, like I also, like I will lick things that ought not to be licked when it makes no sense you know I'll, I'll i'll lick a clean brush with no paint in it that i have no intention of using it's weird it's like a it's like a reflex at this point Blondie, I mean, you can say you don't drink pee water. We don't judge. <laughs> I did a similar dumb thing the other day. I stuck my car keys where the straw would go in my drink and tried to start my vehicle. <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> Although I have definitely done similar things. What are your plans for song now that your army is complete? Oh man, I need to fucking play the new Greyjoy. That's my plan. Um, but no, for real though, I um, I would love to keep painting Greyjoy stuff. Just because I have so many um, different lists that I would like to run. And I have a lot of Greyjoy stuff painted already, but um, I need more. I need more whole, like full units painted is what I really need. I 
Oh, I should make the eyes. Because that's going to be tricky. All right, let's get a black paint. Um, I would also at some point like to paint a Stark army. Um, just because I like Stark. I like, I like the way they look. Um, have you ever licked a brush that still has brush cleaner in it? Um, I have licked a brush that has Goo Gone in it, that has acetone in it. Uh, I've licked a brush that has oil paint in it. These are all accidents. And I think I've done all those one time and never again. Okay, we need black. Ooh, is that a black? That's black. I heard we're talking about licking paints. <laughs> Professional paint licker. Tuning in. I like random things too. And then my wife says, not now. Nice. Lacquer thinner. I imagine lacquer thinner would not be very good. Yes. All right. To make painting this eye socket a little bit easier, it really isn't that hard, but you can also, you can water down the paint so it kind of just floods the, the eye socket area. But it doesn't really matter because painting the surrounding black mask area is it's quite easy actually. Okay, chat, are you ready for me to struggle to paint these eyes for at least a couple of minutes in a row? I'm not going to paint the skin surrounding the eyes. I'm not a crazy person. Try to paint the pupil and the iris. Or, uh. That looks fine, but the problem is, is that I'm never gonna be able to paint a black dot inside of that. Okay, that's more doable. This is the harder one. I could be like just totally acing the eyelids. Fuck. It doesn't really matter though, because you can't really see them. that mistake without just repainting the whole eye. Get a micro pen. I like to struggle. Um, I drink the paint and lick the brush so the residual paint in my mouth goes on the brush. Nice, that, that's the best, most efficient way to get paint on your brush. You should have, you should have to lick the paint in front of Jason from Monument and give a tasting note on the paint eyes. <laughs> I am a serving member of the brush lick militia. <laughs> Hot take, I like my models without face covering helmets and I don't paint eyes or mouths. I, I mean, I don't know if that's much of a hot take. It's definitely a hot take to me. You know, I think the tip of my brush is sharper than a 0.03 
Micron pen. I mean, I don't know. You, you tell me. Look at that. I feel like it is. But is it easier to use? Googly eyes. I don't know. Sadly, I don't think I like either of these eyes. <laughs> Typically, what I'm able to do is I'm able to get one eye looking right. Oh, man. Well, I did say I was going to paint this several times, so I'm not a liar. This one doesn't look bad, but it just looks a little too crazed, which might not be a bad thing for Codor, TBH. Uh, I know the wisdom is that a good brush will have a sharp tip regardless of size, but I recently got a 000 brush and it has legit been easier to do precise dots for eyes and weapons. That's good. That's good. Licking my brush is what made me immune to COVID. <laughs> I fill my mouth with paint and marbles and then gargle to mix it up. No paint shaker needed. Jesus Christ. I think pens are more about always having that same flow and consistency, whereas with a brush, there are always more variables to deal with than pens. Yeah, that's for sure, for sure. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, if something is easier for you than some online internet person says, you should always go with that. Always. Are you getting in on that war for Arrakis action? I got my pledge delivered. Looks like someone took a claw hammer to the box. Um, That's a Simon game, right? Uh, I would love to play it. I'm probably not going to buy it, though. Maybe this guy just has two glass eyes. He's just going into battle blind. That seems very Cawdor esque. Okay. Yeah, that works. We'll keep that one. I don't know if I have enough white eye white to do this one. No, not really. That one looks good. We'll have to redo this one though. You guys ever do this? You ever like rest the tip of your brush on your thumb? This painting like this is super locked in. I put like my brush holding into my thumb and then like, like you, you don't have a lot of movement, but you don't honestly need it while you're painting eyes. Anyone ever do that? Use the force, Scott. <laughs> I ain't painting your maze for free. Ah, fuck me, man. <laughs> um, use the force, I'm trying. I think we should do another layer of the eye white. There we 
we go. All right, let's try again. And I don't think. Oh. Okay. I'm going to take it. I'm not going to question it. I'm going to take it. It's a little eye slit. It's a little cat like, you know. It's not a nice round eye, but honestly, I don't care. All right, now I just need to be careful to only paint the raised surface of the mask and not the. Um, any part of the eye that's sunken below. That looks good though. I've seen I return at a critical time. <laughs> Stop painting eyes, just say the mini is blinky if anyone asks. <laughs> I'm gonna start giving all my mini eyes like, yeah, just gigantic, yeah. Not a bad idea. Yeah, he looks good. This guy reminds me of a Nickelodeon character. He's definitely got Nickelodeon character vibes. You're not wrong. He's a little cartoon villainy with this big old beak. I kind of like the beaks. Let's get some of this electric yellow. Some of this chartreuse. What do they call it? They call it bile green. <laughs> it's the hair. I've started to paint black by mixing in like electric green into the black with white. That creates an interesting effect. Little crispy highlights here. Digging that. We'll do some brief brown highlights and then glue this dingus in. Have I played Yafsiga? Um, yeah, I uh, I played a a full match of it when I visited Black Sight Studios, and it was awesome. I would love to. I would love to play it, like like paint my own mo models and have a table of it and play it. I think that'd be a lot of fun.
it's like a simple game that like doesn't it feels like it still has like some strategic depth to it maybe not maybe i'm just imagining that God, please Google Keith Flint of Prodigy. Worth it. Okay. I'll take you up on that. Keith, the like, the band Prodigy? Keith Flint. Prodigy. Images. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know this guy. Yeah, definitely he's got this guy vibes. 100%. <laughs> I should change his ganger's name to Keith. Little caught our head right there. Let's pop him on. The tricky part is always fucking getting the head off of the pin. I don't want to use the pin. I guess I could just cut it off. I'll just cut it off. I'm pretty sure I shoved that one in there pretty deep. You guys want to see something sad? Look at my look at look at the state of my Tamiya side cutters, dude. Look at look at that. Oh, these are nice side cutters. But one day I fucked them, and then they became my shitty side cutters forever. He was Guy Fieri's insp greatest inspiration. <laughs> okay, I believe that too. Do I just cut it off? Let's see, why not? Knuckle flying. Problem is I didn't cut off the whole goddamn thing. God damn it. All right. We need to... I just painted this head. And so the paint is like at its weakest right now. And so I feel like if I grip the sides of the paint job, I'm definitely going to fuck up the paint job. So in order to... I'm still going to do that because I'm a madman. But in order to do that and have the best chance of not fucking the paint job, I'm going to use my little finger cots here. Or paper towel probably would have done the same thing. Yeah, I pinned I pinned the head down so it didn't fly away. No god hands for you. Yeah, no kidding, right? You do not deserve them. All right, that shaved off enough. Let's glue that head in, and then make any final adjustments as need be. Drill it and pin it into the body. Um, I think if I were to do that, um, I would just fuck it up and I would like not get it in the right spot. Uh, I wear contacts while I am recording. Oh my god, bro. Look at this guy. Fucking look at this guy, dude. Oh man, that head. Ah, oh, whenever I glue a head on, it just always makes it. It always makes the model. Like the same thing happened to this guy when I glued his head on. I was just like, oh, okay, this model now is fucking amazing. Uh yeah, I I Goobs, I've just fucked up so many shots of mantra painting because of my goddamn glasses. Like, it's actually incredible. I got so fed up one day that I was just like, you know what? I'm going to buy a bunch of single-use contacts. Ah, uh, I love this. I love, I, I love this. I love every single character. It's so much fucking fun. 
So fun. So fun, dude. All right, let me, I'm gonna do still a little bit more um, highlighting. Oop, let me lose, ultra curl red. A little bit more bright highlights in the sides of the temples. Getting Robin Hood Necromunda vibes, nice. That's like the payoff. I know, right, dude? Oh, I totally agree. Look how I love that fucking payoff. My favorite stream is where Scott finds a way to get in the shot just where we can see his painting through his glasses. Is his head from the box with the running bots? Yeah, yeah, that's that's that box. Uh, Ridge Walkers, Cawdor Ridge Walkers, I believe they're called. Cawdor have so many good heads. Oh, there's an edge right there that I didn't highlight. Oh, but now I did. And I also aced the uh, brown thing. We can fix that. It's actually a lot more of the thing showing than I thought would show, but I think we painted enough of it to, uh, to look good still. Yes. Okay, that's bright enough now. <laughs> okay, base room time. Um, the color scheme is way better than the original. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I also kind of agree. The original Cotter scheme is not good. Um, I think a lot of GW schemes are super good. Um, not, I don't like hate, hate them by any means. But here, let's take a look at the original one. That is a green mask, yes. <laughs> um, I don't hate it. I don't think it's awful, but I think it's a little weird. <laughs> These random, like the random red spot colors. I don't think that's what we want, you know? I don't think that's good. I think if you actually nix that, it kind of solves a lot of problems. I don't know. It's not bad, it's not bad. Okay, let's paint the best rim. Uh, we need we need a nice satin black. Oh, I think I already have it out actually. I think I painted a base rim yesterday. Oh, sorry, camera. We're going face. Um, Okay, what Necromunda faction has the coolest vehicles? I definitely don't know the answer to that, but there are some cool vehicles in the game. A lot of the vehicles can be taken by all factions. Um, I don't know. I would like it better with tan pants instead. Tan pants? Where did that box go? Tan pants? Yeah, I think I would too, but then what would you paint the bandaging, you know? Would you have it all be tan? I first thought they were supposed to be red because my buddy painted them red and it fits their design so much better than blue. Dude, oh my god, the dirt bikes, the Gene Steeler Cult dirt bikes are so fucking cool. Like, if I had all the time in the world and endless creative energy, I would have a Gene Steeler Cult army, a Sisters of Battle army, and a Dark Eldar army for 40k. I would love that so much. Uh, Scott! Thanks to your channel, I've finally been brave enough to do some blending when it comes to my shading. Any quick tips that will help a rookie like me? Yeah, I would say just ditch, ditch glazing and wet blending and feathering, ditch all that bullshit and just learn how to get a blended effect with only layering. Once you've mastered that, then look into all that other stuff. 
You make any Mordheim shiz? No Mordheim shiz, but I feel like if I'm going to enjoy Necromunda, I'm probably also going to enjoy Mordheim. And I think everyone that listened to the most recent podcast episode that was too quiet, uh, sorry about that, um, also agrees with that. I think there was a comment, that, and people liked that comment. Um, no Mordheim stuff yet, though. Yeah, Mr. Funkin does a lot. I think there's a lot of bits and bobs on Gene Sailor Cult minis. Am I planning on trying Star Wars Unlimited? Man, I missed the event at my local store to try it out, but I would like to try it out, yeah. Freaking Sir Astro keeps posting pics of cards. And it's got me, it's got me a little hyped. You played it this Saturday, Goobs? Nice. Yeah, I want to try it out. I feel like in your current era, it might be, you might like Mork Bjorg. You pulled a Millennium Falcon. What does pulled a Millennium Falcon mean? Does that mean that like you bought a set and it was in that set or you drew it while you were playing? What does that mean? I've been burned by FFG card games one too many times. That's very fair. That is very fair. The trick is you just got to play every card game like it's an LCG. And you just, you just buy the starter set and a couple extras and then you're done. Speaking of card games, though, I've, I've rediscovered my love for Smash Up. Anyone play Smash Up ever? I freaking love Smash Up. It's not like a, it's not like a competitive game or like a, I don't even know if I'd call it balanced, but um, it's really fun. It's a really fun game to play. It's like, this, it's like the same amount of enjoyment that I get playing uh, Dice Throne. Anyone play Dice Throne? That's a good game? Nice. What's Smash Up? It's a card game. It's a, it's a living card game where you uh, take two races, two fantasy or sci-fi or, or modern races, and you smash them together. You make a 40-card deck, and you, you play the game. It's really good. It's, it's, it's simple. The game, the game makes you feel like you're really smart because uh, every like combination of faction has like really cool combos you can do. And when you figure out the cool combo and you do it, and you feel cool and good. Uh, I don't know if it's like balance. There's definitely combinations of uh, races that are too strong. I think like zombies and ghosts is probably a little broken. I have not tried Noosh at all. If I can be totally honest, uh, his demonstration live on stream was not super compelling. It didn't really seem like it was doing a whole lot. Um, but that being said, I didn't really fully watch, and that was one attempt, and it was under duress, so it doesn't really say anything. But it didn't like encourage me to like go out and buy it immediately, you know. Um, Scaver, Scaver, thank you for the sub. My buddy has almost all the expansions. Super fun for pickup games, absolutely. Fun for pickup games, hundred percent. Damn, Master 2K. Feels like Dice Throne ends before your character pogs off. What do you mean by that? Like you don't get to do your alt? Those are some sick looking card art. Thank you. I watched the Artist Opus video. Artist Opus made a video on some other company's product? Color me surprised. Um, game ends before you have the alts. Thank Master 2K. The, the, the whole key to getting alts off and dice thrown is just saving up cards that allow you to change dice rolls. Like if you can save up cards, then you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna get it off once a game. Uh, very rarely does someone, you know, roll into a Yahtzee, you know, a, a full alt without any modification. Um, but I, I would say in at least half of my games, one, if not both players are getting an alt off. Um, that's my experience though. But you're right, sometimes it does end a little too soon. I get that. Every video where I've seen them use Noosh has not translated, has not translated what it is and why I should buy it. Well, wow. okay. Um, I think it's really cool for people that don't want to deal with more toxic materials. I think I think Noosh is great at being an, ac an acrylic that comes close to doing what you can do with enamels or oils. It doesn't do it better, it just does it safer. Uh, it's a lot more likely to get alts in multiplayer games. Yeah, that, that too, because you can share cards and stuff. You're totally right about that in Dice Throne. Um, Malev did some experimentation. Okay, cool. That is cool. I understand what it's trying to do. 
I, I know that it's trying to be like oil paints or, you know, give acrylic paint kind of a creamy, long consistency so you can kind of like remove paint uh, but keep it in the recesses. But I don't know, it didn't, it didn't really seem like it, again, I, I need to try it out myself. Yeah, that, that first demo that I saw, I, I wasn't like blown away, which is why I didn't like go out of my way to buy it. But I do want to try it because a lot of people uh, have had great experiences with it. Or they've, or they've used it for something entirely different than its intended purpose, which also is cool. You're, you're looking forward to Malev recognizing you. Malev's awesome, man. Yeah, I want to change my answer to my, my... The thing I'm looking forward to the most is seeing Malev. And giving him a big, a big hug. All right, I think one more coat of base rim black and we should be good. Feels like a, it feels like just contrast slash high flow medium loaded with a paint retarder. I'm looking forward to some nice and awkward conversations with, with people uh, whose work I enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's kind of what I feel like about all hobby products. But Jason, Jason told me that they, they developed Noosh from the ground up. But what, what every hobby product seems like is just a new combination of uh, some medium, retarder, and flow aid. Like, like the things we've all come to know and enjoy, but in a different ratio, you know? But um, I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Jason's word for it. I think he developed something totally different. And I gotta try it out. All right, this juve, who should this juve be? The available bone pickers I have are Lazarus, Abraham's Taken, there should be two, or Elijah. Is this guy more of a Lazarus or is he more of an Elijah? What do you guys think? Let me get a nice little focus on it. Bing. Call him Bartholomew. Uh, see, that's also a fucking great name. Um, I use Noosh a lot right now, painting my Cities of Sigmar army. It helps me grunge the models up for a more grim dark look. I can't use the chemicals in enamel washes, so I've enjoyed that. I've also used it as an additive to wet blend and with great results. Wonderful, Venti. Noosh operates on such a different time scale than most acrylics. I expect they are using something not found in most paints. What does that, Evan, what does that mean in, in human English? Do you mean that it extends the drying time of the paint? It operates on a different time scale. What does that, what does that mean? Uh, Jeb, Jed, I can't call him Jed because our, my leader's name is Jedediah. Elijah, 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 Elijah. I thought for sure you guys were gonna say, um, the other one, uh, Lazarus, but Elijah it is. All right, hold on. We, now we gotta get a shot. We gotta, we gotta, get, gotta get a shot of the boys. Fuck. That's sticky on my palette, or on my cutting mat. Um, Jehoshaphat. <laughs> uh. uh. You gonna paint their names on the rims? No, I never liked that. They never looked good to me. Okay, like most retarders slow things down a bit. But Noosh makes it like 30 plus minutes. Okay. That's fair. 
All right, I I'm going to put in the guys that have the converted weapons just to pad out the stats a bit. Just because they were painted, but then I felt like a tryhard. But they're going in the family photo. As a... Who said that? Hilarious name. Frederick. I do like the name Bartholomew. And I, if I if I add another dude to my squad, which is absolutely going to happen, um, I will name him Bartholomew. That was Adric Knight. Nice. All right. Oh, we got so many more gangers, dude. We got so many more gangers over here. Look at my gangers. <laughs> Ugh, love it. Oh, no. Hold on. Well, you can't really, it's not a good angle. I'm, gonna, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm gonna just zoom the camera out, Scott. Jesus Christ. Oh. Look at that kind of largely top-down angle of my gangers, dude. Um, thank you guys for being so nice. I appreciate it. Um, I think they look great too. I'm so excited. I use like tons of different greens for all the greens. So if you like look at them individually, some look the same, some look a little bit different. I'm so happy with them. They look so nice. Um, oh, you know what I can do? to make the angle of the dangle a little bit better. How many is your full gang? Um, a thousand creds, I had nine dudes. Um, now I have um, 11 dudes. That's one leader, two champions, and a bunch of dudes, a bunch of gangers. Yeah, boy. <sighs> nice little refocus. Thank you guys, there's, there's my golden demon entry. 20 quid if you eat one of them right now. That is not worth it. I bet two of them only know how to read, yeah. Thank you, Teague. Surely the greens should be slightly different colors. You think that Lazarus is doing his laundry more than others? Nah, dog. His stuff is grungy, dude. Is that a click of magnet bases? Yes, it is. Um, Esau. <laughs> you can be, I like that name, too. I like that name, too. <laughs> Not that they are any less zealous for it. Um, what was the problem? I'm happy with these guys. Getting those, getting the different heads in the mix really works out. That really changes up the, the look and feel. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna sit here and look at these guys for a little bit, guys. Me and, me and my minis got to be alone for us just a, just a bit. The sad part is that the, the back of the coifs looks so good. Like the volumes on the backs are very nice to paint. And you never, you don't see any of that in the front. Uh, a lot of this, let's see here. Um, the flamethrowers are aftermarket. This head, this head, and this head are, are different bits. Oh, and also the sniper head and the sniper gun is a different kit, but uh, there's actually a solid amount of shit in the uh, in the base box. Like this whole guy, crossbow dude, that's all in the base kit. It's super good. I really I really enjoyed um, making models from it. Like I, I wasn't, I read the instructions for some of the guys, but otherwise I just kind of like did whatever. And it really, it really worked out. Okay, now what? Um, I guess we can start painting the other guys, but the problem is that I'm doing that for a video. 403? Oh, okay, we'll just chill then. We'll just chill. We don't need to paint anymore. Um, 
I like the guy with the one barefoot. I know, dude. There's a, there's a model in the kit. That's fucking barefoot, dude. If you if you did eat a Warhammer model, though, I reckon a squig, a squig would be good. Yeah, that one would go down pretty easily. I love Necromunda. I'm playing Vansar in a campaign right now. Awesome. What game are you on? Are you like on game number three of the campaign or, or further uh, down? I think I'm going to try Necromunda after watching the last podcast. You sold it well. I, oh, awesome. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I do think I do think part of the fun for me is is playing it in a campaign. Um, uh, it's just I don't know I don't know what it is. Like normally I don't like the game in between the game. You know what I mean? Like I, I normally hate that in board games when there's like a lot of like maintenance phase bullshit to do. Um, but in Necromunda, it's it's more enjoyable for some reason. I have a lot of fun uh, with every single individual character. Um, I've been inspired by cults to name my gangers, names them all after biblical figures. I mean, they go hand in hand, right? A lot of cults are based off, you know, some kind of modern day Christianity. Not a lot of them, but the, the ones that I was inspired by. But you're right. At a certain point, I did just start looking up biblical names because that just fits, you know? The cult of Jesus. What were the apostles? I want to name all my cults that are dead rappers. Nice. Well, there you go. There's my Yak Tribe link if you want to see uh, all my gang, my whole gang at the moment. Um, yeah, there was a barefoot dude. Getting some Vansar tomorrow. Thanks to Scott. Hell yeah, dude. Good luck. Good luck. I got some Vansar models I got to get rid of. Man, this guy. I'm sorry. I got, I got to show this guy off again. I'm so happy with how this, this turned out. It doesn't make sense that he's holding the whetstone on top of the sword. Like, that would be very uncomfortable to hold the sword like that. But uh, you got to work with the bits you got, you know? I, I already said this, but it's going to be hilarious. My, my commander is doing so well right now in the in the campaign. Like, he is just killing everybody. And now that I've given him, like, a proper badass model, he's probably going to, like, roll like shit now, like, and just die instantly. We'll see. We'll see. I should give him some smoke grenades. Oh, he's got too much shit on him anyways. Um, he needs a sword boy. Yeah, you're right. What does that? What does it mean to be persona non grata? What does that mean? Looks very stoic. Yeah, dude. <laughs> New model syndrome. You've doomed him. <laughs> he does need a sword boy. Person unwanted. Not welcome. You like the holders. Yeah, this is a uh, a cases. There's our little symbol right there. Do not want. Get him out of here. Yeah. So he's even he's even gnarlier now, dude. He, he accumulated so much experience in the first two games that he was a, he was able to. I'm saying it like it's, it's, like he's doing this. This is me doing this. Uh, he's tough as four. He's got a four up armor save. He's got nerves of steel. I was able to afford a skill in a secondary skill tree, which costs like a ludicrous amount of experience to get. But I got nerves of steel, which allows him to, if he gets shot by a, a weapon, he can make he can pass a cool check, and he, if he passes it, he won't get pinned. Which is like that's so fucking big for a melee uh, uh, character. So he's a he's a nuisance, dude. Can I make a tower of handles? Toughness five? Jesus Christ, dude. Luckily, I have strength six when I charge with Jetty D, but that is not true for anyone else. Oh, yeah, dude. Here we go, dude. Oh, wait, no. You've done it. Omega painting handle. Diamond hip. 
Can I justify my ad blocker now? Absolutely. Now you can. Uh, I look forward to melting him with a melta. Oh, hitting him with a melta. That's possible. I might just hide him in a corner the entire time. Um, can you handle the Tower of Handles? Uh, these are uh, A Case, European brand. I don't know if the actual production handles are 3D printed, but these ones very clearly are. That's literally a lightsaber, bro. Yeah, he pretty much is. He pretty much is wielding a lightsaber. I think this guy's my favorite because he's basically a fantasy character. Like, there's nothing about him that is sci-fi. He's a dude in a bunch of fabrics and leathers, candles with a sword. That's it. I like it. Oh, you're saying this is a lightsaber. Dude, you're totally right. Holy shit. Feels like I'm playing uh, oh, that Star Wars game where you can like customize your lightsaber down to like the tiniest little bit. Fuck, what's that game called? Memory is so trash. Um, AK and Vallejo are both Spanish, if I'm not mistaken, so we get them cheaper. Yeah, um, they are both Spanish. Chimera is Italian, I believe. Uh, I love a guy who chooses to stab instead of shoot. <laughs> uh, not Jedi Fallen Order, the uh, the one that came after it. Jedi Survivor, thank you. Um, all right, y'all. I think I'm gonna head out. Finished up a nice little Necromundan ganger uh, on this stream. Uh, I'm in the process of making You got what you need? Okay. <laughs> I'm in the process of making a video about Necromunda at the moment. Um, and so this will probably be one of the last streams. Maybe next week will be the last stream of painting Necromunda for the moment. Obviously, you add like new people to your gang all the time. And so I'll be painting one-offs every now and then. But this will be the last one of the last streams before the whole gang is complete. Um, but yeah. Hey Scott, I haven't caught you in a while. Is it just you now? Yeah, it's just me now. DSMR99. Uh, I remember playing Jedi Academy in like 2003 and thinking the lightsaber customization was good. Can we expect a game sesh of Necromunda at some point? Would you guys like that? Would you like to see a live game of Necromunda? Lots of yeses. Awesome, dude. Well, try to get some good camera angles. So I feel like I feel like I really misunderstand the importance of seeing the painted models in a gaming stream. At first, I just it didn't occur to me that people would want to see them, but obviously they do. Um, and so I got to figure out a way to get like some really cool camera angles in a highly terrained battlefield. Because I think that's really one of the important things with Necromunda. It's just, just the modeling going on. Um, all right, everyone's saying yes. The demand, yeah, Adric Knight. That's definitely what you would need. You would need probably two or three camera operators that can just point at the action and then someone to switch to it. Will there be sound effects and lasers? Probably not. Ever thought about doing a hand cam setup? Um, I thought about it, yeah. I just didn't uh, didn't have the money to uh, shell it out to buy one of those things. But yeah, that would not be a bad idea. DSMR99 says, just got all three L's from you with the master classes. Should be starting them in a couple of days. Awesome, dude. Good luck. I hope they're helpful. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Custom terrain built around cameras. Oh my God, dude. That's amazing. Um, I think if you do old phones on small tripods like MCDM did, you could do a ton. Yeah, I think that they might not look very good, but I think maybe it's better to have them than not have them at all. I think is uh, probably probably true. Um, all right, I'm heading out, y'all. I'll be live on Twitch a week from now, painting probably Cod or stuff if I'm if I know myself well. Um, 
Maybe I'll finish all the painting before then. I should, honestly. I should be able to paint three dudes and some weapons in four days. Um, all right, y'all. Bro, boo, no leave. I gotta, hang, I gotta hang out with the wife. You know what? I keep, I keep saying I'm leaving and I don't leave, but streaming from one to four is just such a wonderful way to end the workday. It's like, I'm just gonna hang out with, with, with some peeps. We're gonna chat movies and the hobby. And then I'm just gonna paint until the end of the workday. And then when I'm done, I'm leaving. Like it's so, it's so nice. Um, anyways, okay, I'm gonna leave now. Um, thanks for uh, hanging out. Thanks for supporting the stream. Thanks for chatting with me while I hobby. Uh, I'll be back in a week. Uh, same place, same time, 1 p.m. CST to 4 p.m. CST. Um, but until then, guys, uh, keep paying minis. See ya! Mm.